Good morning, Woodlawn. How's everybody doing on this beautiful Wednesday morning? It is absolutely gorgeous outside today. I hope you're up and around. Good to see you guys this morning. Thanks for jumping on today. Let's see who's with us. There is Patch. How you doing there, Patch? It's good to see you this morning. I hope you are doing well. There is Fonda. Hi, Fonda. Good to see you. Hope you are doing well. Um, there's Marty and Kathy, our faithful Wednesday morning uh, folks. Good to see you today. Uh, hey, Jeff Bebout. Um, how you doing, man? Good to have you with us today. There is Eric Fleming. Uh, good to see you guys. I know there's a bunch of people <clears throat> jumping on here this morning. Good to see you guys. Uh, how many of you are enjoying this nice 60 plus degree spring like weather? Uh, man, it, it is awesome. Uh, I love the spring. Um, it's just so nice because I, I always felt like I, I like all the seasons personally, <clears throat> but you know, something is very sweet about I mean, so hearts are flying on the screen right now. Um, there's just something special about spring. And I think it's because winter, in my opinion, in Ohio lasts about a month, month and a half too long. How many of you agree with that? Winter is just, I like winter, but it's just too long. <laughs> I think it just, it's, if, it, if it would just be a month or so shorter, have a white Christmas, all that kind of stuff. Um, and in fact, let, let me have, have you comment. What, I'm just curious, what is your favorite season of the year? Your very favorite season, you know, is it... Is it summer? Is it fall? Is it winter? Is it spring? Um, I'd have to probably say summer for me because I love to ride my motorcycle and go out and play with my kids and family. But anyways, I'd be curious to see what your favorite one is. Uh, by the way, speaking of that, uh, we are going to be entering into a time change. Uh, time change this Sunday morning. I don't know why they always do the time change on Sundays. So our 815 service is going to be an hour earlier. <laughs> so uh, that'll be out. I'll, I'll see what kind of troopers we have this week. But the beautiful thing about that is then we have the longer days. So the sun's out, weather's getting warmer, days are getting longer. That is an awesome thing. But speaking of three services, they went awesome this past weekend. Uh, we had an incredible kickoff to the three services. Um, it was just wonderful to see everybody that's been... Uh, been jumping in and being a part of things. It's been really awesome. In fact, that 945 was almost at capacity. We had a little bit of room to breathe at 945, but I was amazed at the amount of people that came at 815 a.m. And what's interesting is the kids were divided about half. So about half the kids were at 945 in the kids in ministry and then the other half at 1115. So it's really been nice to spread out. Um, also, we're pretty pumped about Easter. Uh, Easter at the Civic Center this year. It is going to be an awesome time. We're thrilled about that. Uh, we're going to be doing two services at the, C uh, the Civic Center, 9 a.m. and um, 11 a.m. It's going to be awesome. We have this big staging coming in and lights and all that cool stuff. But, but ultimately, we're doing all that so we can just celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I hope you're planning on coming. In fact, I would be curious even this morning for you to comment um, which service would you be coming to? Would you be coming to the 9 a.m. and or would you be coming to the 11 a.m.? We're trying to break it up a little bit and give people options of when to come. I'd be curious to see uh, when you are coming. Well, let me dive into things because I know these mornings get away from us. So let me dive right into our devotional today. I've been doing a little kind of mini series uh, with you the last few weeks called Spiritual Edition. And we have been looking in the book of 2 Peter at some of the things that Peter, or the Holy Spirit spoke through Peter, that you and I should be adding to our faith. So what we realize is that Jesus did all the work. He paid the price. Our salvation doesn't come by works. Jesus did it all. And not only that, but as that chapter one opens up, that he's, the Bible says God's given us all things that we need for life and godliness. He's given us the precious promises of scripture. So he did all the work. He basically laid the foundation but as believers, it's our job to grow. It's our job to build on that foundation. And so the Holy Spirit through Peter tells us that we should do add seven things to our faith, to that foundation. And uh, we looked at the first one, uh, actually two of them. The first week we looked at virtue, that 
moral heroism, being a moral person. Godliness means being all in, serving God, not half-hearted commitment, but um, all in. Uh, this, the second week we talked about, actually Pastor Andrew talked about knowledge, adding knowledge to your faith. Um, the importance of studying the word and growing in our knowledge of God. Last week, we talked about a tough one, uh, self-control. How many of you know, sometimes the hardest person to lead is ourselves and having self-control. And um, that, that was a, a definitely an encouraging message. If you didn't get a chance to check it out, you can see it. Just scroll down on the Facebook. But today, what I want to encourage you with is, <clears throat> here is number number four that we are to add to our faith and that is perseverance perseverance how many of you know it's one thing to start and it's another thing to finish uh you know it's it's easy to start we can all start stuff right <laughs> but finishing something that is a whole different ball game because oftentimes when you and i start something something uh, some worthy endeavor chances are along the way um, there'll be lots of opportunities to be discouraged, lots of opportunities to want to give up and to quit. But the Bible says, listen, if you're going to be a mature person, if you're going to really walk in, your, uh, walk in the knowledge of God, then you're going to have to be able to persevere through the good times and the challenging times. I'm just going to read a couple of these verses today, uh, verses 5 through 8. If you have your Bible with you, you can open it up to 2 Peter chapter 1, starting at verse 5. This is what the Bible says. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, that's our part to be diligent, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. Notice this in verse 8, for if these things are yours, so they're yours and mine, we've added them to our faith, they abound in us. Uh, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus. So uh, you and I want to add these things because if we do it and add these things, it will grow in our knowledge of God. But the Bible goes on to say, if we don't have these things, if we don't add these things, then we're short-sighted in our faith. So we want to grow. So that means we have to have perseverance. Um, in fact, uh, how many of you guys enjoy the Olympics? I love watching the Olympics. And uh, there's a story that really touches my heart. It was way back in the Olympics that took place in 1968. They took place in Mexico. Uh, when the marathon uh, took place, 26 miles. I don't know. I, I'm more of a sprinter than a long distance runner. How many of you guys enjoy long, running long distances? I, I'm definitely not the long distance guy. I was always better at like quick sprints, but I never had good, I don't know, lung capacity to go uh, and, and do these long races. But nevertheless, they had the marathon that year. And uh, no one really remembers um, the, the, the guy who actually won the race. The person who actually got most of the attention and most of the accolades was, uh, was a, a precious young man from Tanzania. Uh, his name was Stephen Akwari. And uh, basically what had happened is he had started that race uh, and he was running well. I mean, he was in the the, the first be beginning part of the pack. And during that race, he actually fell. He had, a, he had an unfortunate fall and he literally dislocated his right knee and he hurt his shoulder. But instead of, you know, just stepping out of the race like most people would have, and it probably was the wise thing to do if he would have just stopped racing because there was no way he was going to win. He was probably doing great damage to that knee to keep on racing but what was interesting as uh, the runners came in way, way ahead of him. In fact, by the time he got to the stadium, the stadium was pretty much mostly empty, at least two thirds empty. And you see this man, I watched a video of it. They had cars, police cars with headlights on, it gotten dark. And here is this precious young man just limping along this course. And when he makes it into the stadium, limping, walking some, limping some, people stood up and they began to cheer. And when he finally finished that race, well over an hour plus plus from when the other people uh, finished the race, at the end, somebody asked him, a reporter said, you know, why did you put yourself through that? Why did you do that? And his response was incredible. I love what he said. He said, my country did not send me 5,000 miles to start a race. They sent me 5,000 miles to 
finish a race. Man, I tell you what, that gives me goosebumps every time I, every time I hear, read that, that quote. He said, my country didn't send me 5,000 miles to start a race. My country sent me 5,000 miles to finish a race. And, and let me tell you what, that's, that's the difference. You know, if we're going to have success in any area of our life, we can't just be starters. We have to be people that finish. In fact, the, the, the Bible likens our walk with God to a race. It's not a sprint, but it's a, it's a marathon. I like what Paul said in Corinthians. He said, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 says, Do you not know that those who run in a race, um, they all run, but only one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may win. In fact, in uh, Hebrews, it says, And let us run with perseverance the race marked out before us. So if you and I are going to finish this race of faith, if we're going to accomplish God's will for our lives, then we're going to have to tough it through some difficult times. We're going to have to be like Stephen in those challenging seasons of life to press through and not quit. Because how many of you know, it's, it's easy to start something, but it's tough to finish. You know, how many times have you or I started maybe a Bible reading plan? Like, I'm going to read through the Bible in a year, and then three months in, we're not even reading the Bible anymore. Or, or a prayer time or devotionals. How many of you ever started an exercise program? Man, we start off great. <laughs> You're just, you know, with exercise programs, sometimes in, my, in, in the past, I've been, uh, you know, I'm, I'm one of those guys, I'll get in there and I'll just go really hard that first day, but then I'm so sore, I can't work out for a week and then I don't show up the week after and the week after. Um, in fact, I was watching a YouTube video not long ago about a guy teaching us how to work out. He said, listen, he said, just do a very little bit your first few days so that you can come back the next day. <laughs> but sometimes we want to give up or you start a diet. I'm going to lose weight or I'm going to get out of spending plan. I'm going to get out of debt, you know, um, or, you know, I'm going to get myself healthy until you drive by the ice cream shop, <laughs> you know, or I'm going to continue my education and then things get difficult and we don't finish. But here's what you need to realize. Our, our success in life is not determined by what we start, by what, but by what we finish. You know, it's interesting, even when you look at the Bible, some of the great people in, in, of the Bible, you know, many of them started well, but not all of them finished well. In fact, I was pretty surprised years ago, I, I was reading something by uh, Dr. Howard Hendricks. He was the, uh, the president of the Dallas Theological Seminary. And he did a study of, he did a hundred biographies of people in the Bible. And this is what he found. This is I, kind of I, hard to believe, but out of those hundred people that he studied, Two-thirds of them did not finish well. Some of them had turned to immorality. Some of them drifted from the faith. Some of them ended in a backslidden condition. And so if you and I are going to finish this well, and we're going to stand before Jesus Christ, and he's going to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. How many of you know we're going to have to have perseverance? We're going to have to press through. Uh, you know, Jesus never promised us that this would be an easy thing. In fact, even Peter said in, in the first book of Peter, he said, Beloved, don't be amazed and bewildered at the fiery ordeal which is taking place to test your quality as though something strange were befalling you. You know, he said, listen, you're gonna, we're going to go through hard times. As we're serving God, there's going to be challenges, persecution. There's going to be hardships. Um, there's going to be spiritual attacks. I mean, just watch what Paul wrote about. Paul wrote all the different things in the book of Corinthians that he went through. So if we're going to finish this thing well, if we're going to finish anything, uh, we have to have perseverance. In fact, the word perseverance in the Bible, it actually means cheerful or hopeful endurance, constancy or patient continuance. So if you and I are going to persevere, I, I like what that means. It says it's a, an attitude. It's a cheerful, hopeful. It's this patient continuance. It's like, I'm going I'm to keep on trusting God. I'm going to keep on believing. I'm not going to give up. In fact, I love what Webster's Dictionary, how it defines perseverance. It says it's a continued effort to achieve something despite the difficulties or the failures or the opposition that we got to keep on keeping on. Whether that's something God's called you to do in ministry, whether maybe you're in a difficult relationship, a difficult marriage right now. And you're believing God for that marriage, but you've been tempted to kind of walk away or to give up. Maybe it's a ministry thing. Maybe it's a career. You know God puts you there, but it's really challenging right now. And all kinds of adversities in your way. And you just want to throw up your hands and, and give up. You know, we all face that. Anybody that succeeded in anything in life has faced those times where they just wanted to throw up their hands. In fact, one of the, the great men of God that I admire is a man by the name of Tommy Barnett. He started uh, Phoenix First Assembly in Phoenix, one of the great iconic churches of our day. 
I'll never forget what he said. I, I've said this before in this quote. It just always means a lot to me. He said, great men are just ordinary men. Great men, great women, they're just ordinary men and women. But I love what he, how he finishes it, who wouldn't quit. That's the beauty of it, who absolutely just wouldn't quit. And so how do, we, how do we strengthen our resolve? How do we strengthen our endurance? Let me give you three things as we wrap this up this morning. Here's the first one. Keep on believing. Don't ever give up your faith, regardless of what you go through. We're going to have heartaches. We're going to have setbacks. We're going to have things that happen in life that we don't understand. But whatever you do, don't give up your faith. Keep on hanging on to the word of God. In fact, during times of confusion, times of disappointment, it's all the more important that we dive into the word of God and feed on the word of God. Why? Because our faith comes by reading the word, by listening to the word. So plowing into the word, reading the Bible, that's what strengthens our faith. We have to feed it. In fact, there's a, another Bible hero that I love, and his name is Caleb. Uh, Caleb in the Old Testament, you know, I was just reading yesterday when Moses sent the spies, the 12 spies into to seek out the land when they were get, God was getting ready to stage their going in and, and acquiring the land. And they sent 12 spies over there. And uh, when they came back, 10 of the spies gave a terrible report. But Joshua and Caleb were two guys that came back. And I love, I was reading yesterday where Caleb said, come on, we can do this. If God's sending us in there, we can take this land. And of course, all the other people made everybody fear and they didn't go in. But through Moses, God made a promise to, to Caleb and said, someday, because you had faith, all these other people, they're not going to see the land. But because of your faith, you and Joshua are going to enter that land. And I love when they finally enter the land through the leadership of Joshua, um, it, towards the, the end there, um, Caleb comes to Joshua and he says, listen, Joshua, I was 40 years old when I went into the land to spy it out. And I came back and I gave a good report to Moses. But all the other people outside of me and Joshua, they didn't have faith. And this is what he said. God made a promise to me 45 years ago. So he's 85 at this point. I love it. He says, here I am, Joshua. I'm 85 years old and I'm as strong today as I was 40 years ago, 45 years ago. And God made me a promise and I'm going to take that land. Give me that land. He said, I know there's giants there, but with God's help, I'm going to kick them out. I, I love that spirit. In fact, the, the name Caleb in Hebrew, it means dog. <laughs> I love it. You ever seen a dog latch onto something and not let it go? You could drag them around. That's the way you and I have to be. We have to be people that say, you know what? I know what God said, and I know what the circumstances are saying. They're saying everything opposite, but I'm standing on God's word for healing in my body. I'm standing on God's promise for my, the ministry God called me to. I'm standing on God's promise for this career that I know God called me into. Whatever it might be, you have to hang on to the word. Caleb was a guy that he was 85, and he's like, come on, let's get it done. He never gave up. He had a tenacious spirit. The second thing you have to do is keep on praying. Number one, keep your faith, keep on believing. And number two, keep on praying. I love what the Bible says in Luke 18. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. Always pray and don't give up, regardless of what you face. I love what that, the Bible talks about that little widow woman that just prayed and, and regardless of what she faced, she would not give up. That little widow in front of that judge, she just kept on praying. Make sure that you... Uh, keep on praying and keep on believing regardless of what you're facing today. Maybe it's for a wayward child and you've been praying for years. Can I encourage you? Don't give up praying. God is honored when we pray. In fact, the whole, the whole story of that widow and that unjust judge, she followed that judge around and she just kept on persisting until finally he, she wore him out. <laughs> or like Jacob wrestling with the angel all night saying, I'm not going to let go until you bless me. Man, I just felt like God sent me along this morning to encourage some people. Don't give up believing what God told you. Don't give up praying and trusting God. And here's the last thing is keep on serving God. Whatever God's called you to do right now, wherever God's placed you as a mother, as a, as a husband, as to serve in ministry or, or maybe that career, your, it's like your mission field that God, listen, don't, don't give up serving God. I love what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. It says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Don't give up serving God. Whatever it is, whatever God's called you to do in this season of your life, don't quit. 
Don't throw in the towel. You know, Nehemiah was a great story of that, how he finished those walls. You know, it's interesting, when he got those walls halfway built, that's when he had his worst adversity. It's interesting. You know, when you talk about marathon runners, they talk about something called hitting the wall. Marathon runners will tell you that, that usually about halfway through that race, um, they, they call it, it's a term called hitting the wall, where they're absolutely exhausted and everything inside of them is telling them to quit. What happens is the glycogen stores in the muscles are completely depleted. And there's like, I mean, they almost are depressed and they have nothing left to give. Well, any runner will tell you if you can press through the wall, if you can keep on moving, you will get what is known as a kick or a second wind. Once you get to the lowest of lows, suddenly your body will release endorphins. And those endorphins will give you almost a euphoric high to keep on going. And if you can press through the wall, when you get through the wall, you'll have a whole new second wind. And, and I want to encourage you today. Maybe you've hit the wall. Maybe you're like, I've been praying for healing. It hasn't come. I've been believing for that marriage and it hasn't happened. I've been doing this, I've been, I've been in this job and I know God sent me there, but man, it's just horrible right now. Can I encourage you if you've hit the wall, keep on believing, keep on praying and keep on serving. Because as you do, if you will serve, if you will pray, if you will believe and not give up, eventually God will give you what he's promised. Let me read something to you as I get ready to close today. It's a little poem called Don't Quit. And I just feel like that's the word today. Don't quit. Whatever you're facing today, don't give up. No matter how hard it is, don't quit. Here's a little poem as we get ready to close. It says, when things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high, and you want to smile, but you have to sigh, when care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Success is failure turned inside out, the silver tint of, cloud, in the, of the clouds of doubt. And you can never tell how close you are. It may be near when it seems so far. So stick to the fight when your hardest hit. It's when things go wrong that you mustn't quit. So let me encourage you today. If you're in the will of God, keep on believing, keep on praying, keep on serving God, keep on doing what God called you to do. And someday you'll see the fruit of your faith. And someday we'll stand before the Lord. And God will say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Let me pray for you today. Father, I thank you for each and every person that's watching this morning from wherever they are. <clears throat> I just have a feeling in my heart today that there's some people watching that are discouraged. Lord, they're going through a really tough season. Lord, spiritually, emotionally, they've hit that wall. I pray today that you would give them the tenacity to keep on believing, to keep on holding on to your word, to keep on praying to keep on serving you wherever you've placed them to serve, knowing that when they do that, they will eventually see the fruit of what you've called them to do. We thank you for it. We praise you for the blessings that will come through our perseverance in Jesus' name. And amen. Well, God bless you. I hope you have a great day. I look forward to seeing you this weekend, hopefully in one of our three weekend services, 815, 945. 1115. If you can't make it in person, we hope to see you online. I love you. Have a blessed day and keep on keeping on.